Hi, if you're speaking on behalf of yourself, you'll be given three minutes. If you are on behalf of an organization, you shall have five. I'll go with five. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I need to clear my uh, organization. Please. Um, I'm affiliated with Race Matters Friends, and a lot of the materials we we'll passing out tonight are generated from them. Um, I was here about two months ago, and I know we had discussed talking about some of the different... And your name... I'm before sorry, Chad McLaurin. There we go. Yeah. Um, and we had discussed Welcome. a little bit some of the same issues about looking into police policies. Mm -hmm. And um, in the interest of full disclosure, I do want to point out Race Matters Friends, yes, we are very politically active with city council's going-ons. Um, we, we do have um, a case, I think, that is reasonable cases for what we perceive to be problem areas. That does include uh, Chief Burton. That includes our city manager. And it has to do with the policies and procedures. Um, looking at the Citizens Police Review Board, and this came up in question last time, and there was some uh, debate over exactly how far do your authorities extend. And this is on the Como.gov website. This is under the, the dis, um, description of what the Citizens Police Review Board is accountable to or what it does, its duties. And I would point out that on number um, four and five of those duties, uh, review and make recommendations to the police chief and city manager on police policies. Okay, that's, that's kind of a proactionary stance. This is not just a review board for people who have complaints about police activity, but this is like an active uh, engagement and investment with the police force and with um, their policies, uh, their procedures and training. Okay, um, same thing with, with uh, conducting audits or reviews of the records of the police department for compliance within the requirements of this article. Okay, so um, that reads fairly straightforward to me that the potential for this board exists far beyond what it's being utilized for. Okay, and I think that um, I, I can only say that we have a lot of problems in the police department. Um, we have a lot of problems with the city manager. We have a lot of problems with just the politics that are involved here that go far beyond the average police officer trying to conduct their job in the field. Okay, I want to reiterate this is not about the individual officers. They're out there. They have a tough enough job. I get that. But what we do take exception with is that Chief Burton is not setting the tone of leadership necessary to have an effective police force to the um, content of like what the rest of uh, the community is really looking for. Um, there are some things that he mentioned earlier that I just, I flat out wish I could keep track of all of them, but there's going to be months to digest this stuff and come back and refute half his claims on video. Um, you know, I spent 20 years in the military. I'm used to the hierarchy. I'm used to the bureaucracy. I'm used to the executive mindset. I get it. Um, and I understand that these law enforcement officers, they're out there, they're doing hard work, a lot of times thankless work. And I, I do understand that. And I, I um, applaud them for standing up and wanting to do that. However, what the chief described when he first got up here, the fact that he made a distinction between policing and community oriented to policing tells me that he is absolutely not the person to lead the change in that organization. He is talking about reactionary policing. He is talking about taking problem source or problem based resources, what he was talking about, problem based policing, I think is what it was. That is a very reactionary process. You wait for something to occur, you respond to it. That is problem-based policing. The way you fix that is you target communities, you target your hotspots, and you saturate police. That is exactly what leads to the racial and biases that we see in Columbia. We look at the traffic stop data. We still know that they have not come back with any kind of example of anything they've done to um, enact policy to address this issue, this discrepancy. We're talking about a 500% discrepancy nearly between black drivers being pulled over compared to every other demographic in this, in this city. Um, by the same token, you have the officer's ability to use their own uh, judgment as to whether or not they can dig deeper. So they could stop people for either an investigative person or not. It might be something like where there's an infraction, or it could be a hunch, it could be anything. And every time that you have a driver pulled over, the black community is nine times more likely to be exposed to this type of like, you know, invasive type search. And, and so, like, these are stark figures that are taken from very simple calculations that you simply just cannot dispute. You cannot put a cover on this, dance on your way, and say something, and deflect, and just go. Okay? And this has been ongoing for at least a year. Um, I know the traffic report came out in June, I believe. Uh, this has been a, a hot topic of contention. The trend leading up to it was horrific. It's been a, con it's been a point of contention. This latest example shows a continued upward trend. We see a massive amount of turnover, low morale in the police force. I can tell you why that is, and it's toxic leadership. That is something that if we are not looking at 
the leadership, what they're promoting, what their policies are, what their procedures are. To me, I think that falls well within the purview of what your function is. I would love to see uh, more aggressive investigations into this thing. I understand that you know Race Matters Friends has kind of a mixed bag for, for people's uh, opinions around here. In the words of uh, some of our officers, you know, they call us what the, uh, I forgot which, which word exactly it was, and I don't want to misquote them entirely, but the extremists, I think, was um, our position. Well, the officers called? Race Matters Friends. There, there was the illusion that we're the extremists, we're, we're the fringe part of society that's just hangry with, with police and with Burton and with, you know, these people. And so, I mean, there, there's a hostility going on here, and there's a resistance, and that tends to get spread. Half the things that Burton set up here, I could probably pull out easily five or six resources to refute exactly what he said, because we keep track of the stuff. We engage with him on a regular basis. We try to work with him. Uh, th this, this crap about the COU not being dissolved, it most certainly is. You're not going to have a CRU stand up and take from the COU and say, oh, we're still going to maintain both. You just can't do that. That's like saying I'm a pacifist, but I believe in killing people. It's, it's a non sequitur. It just makes no sense whatsoever. So if we don't have the manpower to properly police according to what their model is, and they're trying to gut the COU, to bulk up the CRU, you're gutting the COU. And that is in direct violation of what the city council has um, indicated that they want to go forward with. Um, I, I think if we look at Fox's report, it was no report of action at all at bare Minimum, it's like a book report from you know high school kid. You know, it was it was pathetic. It didn't include hardly any of the action points. As a point of order, yes. you've exceeded your time, but I am going to yield as much time okay. as I can because I want to hear what you have to say. Okay, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Um, so I know the last time we had talked about what are the steps that we can do to, to make progress, and I think the biggest thing we can look at: maintain your independence, maintain that outside. Um, purview or that, that, that vision. Um, and the main reason is, is like you're purposely established not to be beholden to the city, but to be beholden, or actually I take that back, not to the city government, but to the city itself, right? So um, again, I think that there's a lot of resources out there. I do want to pass out, I assume you guys may have gotten this before. Mm -hmm. But this is the... Uh, Community Oriented Policing Report that was generated back in June by Race Matters Friends. Um, there are four signatures, I believe, or four authors at the bottom. I would highly recommend that if you have any questions about the integrity of this report, about their sources, um, get in contact with them. Get in talk with Race Matters Friends as you choose. Um, I'd be happy to relay information as, as able, as needed. But um, like I said, a lot of the things that the Chief said today, to me, I heard political posturing and a lot of it. And um, like I said, I, I don't even have the time or the energy to refute it all. If I can even remember how many times, you know, that, that I had to disagree with some of the uh, things that he said. What would be the top two that really stand out to you? The top two? Yeah. Um, or top, however many you just really Wilson -Clee Camp made is, you sit up and... Yeah, Tracy wilson -Clee Camp is probably, I mean, she's the, the main thrust behind this. No, I mean, tonight. Tonight. You said there were things that... Chief oh, okay. Burton oh, said. I got you. Yeah. I got you. Um, well, let me think back to all of it. Um, I, again, when we talked about the glamour of policing, that raises major flags in my head. Um, that's like saying, hey, I joined the military to go out and kill people. No, that's a side effect of your job. That's not your actual job. And the kind of gung-ho mentality that he tried to come across and explain, I, I feel like that is a holdover from an old guard. And I think he represents that old guard. And it shows in his policies. Uh, that's where you go back to things like saturation policing downtown. That's where you go back to saturation policing through um, you know, responsive units through the uh, CRU. I mean, this is just it's a very punitive, draconian, like um, it's just very oppositional to the community. It's not there to build relations. You don't build relations by occupying a community. You build relations through things like the COU where you try to like dig deeper and look beyond these minor infractions and actings out and try to figure out what's the underlying issue. And that takes more than the police. That takes the city council, that takes the city planners, that takes an investment of resources. And you look at this, this is in for the long game. COU is a long-term investment and it has paid out. 
And what do they do is they turn around and they cancel that and gut it so they can have a reactionary because it's easier for them to control that. They, they can, you know, unless we're going to be up here like questioning their every decision as to why they responded and how, um, you know, it kind of gives them like a lot of ability to like shuffle their people around as they need to. And again, they police the way that Burton feels is appropriate, which I feel is completely inappropriate. Um, going back to corporate culture and just any organizational culture, um, the fact that you've had as much turnover in this police department tells me that there are some major, major issues. I've worked in commands that we've had major, major issues and morale um, concerns, like we're at crippled, crippled the unit. Um, you don't get turnover in the military. You sign up, you're on for four years, so you just kind of suffer it and roll out, if you, or luckily get reassigned somewhere else. But we don't have the luxury just to up and quit, otherwise we probably would have. But I've seen, I've seen the type of leadership, I've seen um, what Mathis has kind of been setting up. I mean, I can't see all of his activities and I can't question all of his intents, that's not the point. Uh, the point is that they are setting a stage for this toxicity to take hold and to continue because it is a political structure. And I firmly believe, like, you know, you're talking about ways to get out there, get your message. First thing, turn these cameras on. You guys are here. It takes a flip of a switch to get these recorded and posted to the website like anybody else. That will get you some exposure. Second thing would be to look into the police department and request what is their annual performance review like? What are their policies? What are their rules of engagement? Like, in combat, we couldn't just fire back at people. We had to, like, escalate to a point where we could actually use lethal force. And it seems to me like the police officers should be doing the same thing, but they're not being told that, and certainly not by this type of mindset. Um, just little things to look at. Yes? So what is your ideal code of what, what, what type of police chief do you feel? The I believe citizens, that we need one. The citizens. Citizens need is a police chief that honestly wants to work towards public relations, to reduce crime through progressive measures, not through oppression. I understand there's times like if you have um, an insurgence or if you have like a flaming up of any kind of issue coming up, I understand there needs to be a reaction. I'm not opposed to reaction. I'm, approach, I'm opposed to choosing that as our main focus. Our main focus needs to be much more community oriented. Um, I, I lived in Japan for 10 years. The Jap Japanese walked around, they had a stick, that was it. And they would walk around the public and they would confront people. And it's like they didn't get stabbed. Now, Japan has much stricter gun laws, so they didn't, obviously didn't get shot as much. But they had a lot more, just they had more of a mindset like this is our community and we don't want to necessarily um, go in there and harass them. We don't want to put them in prison. We don't want to enforce. We want to maintain peace and balance. And that is kind of the oversight that I think this chief most certainly does not promote. Um, and I think by his policies, he's promoting the exact opposite. It is a very entrenched us versus them mentality. And um, I'm sorry, but the thems, the thems are suffering enough. We don't need the jackboots to be oppressing them further. Do you think that maybe some of, uh, I'm not speaking for him, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm looking at the fact that we are in between two major cities and there's a lot of stuff that flows through in these two major cities and maybe that could have some impact on how he does things because of where location 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 so i really don't know how much of that is the issue but this is again this, this is an issue that's worth looking into if he could justify it to the public i think that would be easier and i think a lot of people are just too busy to take him account of his word he's got an honest enough face right but, um, you know, the whole political game here, once you look, you see trends, and the trends lead to the fact where I don't trust the man. So I don't trust most of the reasons and his rationale. To me, it seems like it's, um, it's decorum. You know, he gets up here and puts on a song and dance, and it's like plausible deniability, and that lets him get on about his business. And that's the same thing with, with Mathis, the way he does business. Um, personally, I'm very much a fan of transparency. Um, even if you're wrong, you own it, you admit to it, you fix it, you move on. There's, there's no harm in some of these mispitches where there might be. I'm going to ask you to yield in one minute. Okay. <laughs> so, I mean, this is kind of the bulk. I would recommend um, reading, going through the COU report again. Um, I, I think there's a lot of great kind of um, ideas in there. If I'm wrong about, like, you know, how you're interpreting your duties, I would like to know that because I think that really you are the active board that has any kind of oversight 
Human Relations Committee as well. And if you're not part of the process, if you're not seeing the stuff before it makes policy, then I think that you're being cheated. And that is another thing that really worries me. You should be a review process before it becomes public, and that way we can kind of avoid these little snafus where something gets mispitched and misspoken. I've actually tried to engage with Tracy Wilson Kleekamp. In fact, the reason for the engagement is this document. Okay. Uh, it says very clearly, by the way, it doesn't appear as though her name is even mentioned. Uh, highlighted at the bottom of each page appear to be the authors, and that's fine. I'm not questioning that. But um, I actually tried to meet with Tracy, just one on one. Politely declined. Okay. Um, sense I got, I'm not. The sense I got was she was just too busy. She was going to school. I mean, there were all these sorts of things. Then when I saw this, and when I actually saw the first version of this, I thought, interesting. They've done a fairly comprehensive evaluation. Then I saw this document revised. So again, I tried to engage. That this looks like a living document. This is this this appears to be based on a revision, which is very clearly indicated. Right. Appears to be a living document. And my question to her was, is it a living document? Is it going to be revised periodically with new information? And if so, um, how can I stay abreast of what those changes are? Uh, that's a great question. What I got was crickets. Um, I'll be very candid with you. I don't understand the group. There are good points. I think there are times when they are overstatement. Uh, but I think in order for the group to have broader appeal, there needs to be a more hand in glove is what came to mind, but that's not what you want because you want change. And I, under I get that, OK? Um, but there, there needs to be some sort of cooperative effort, and apparently RMF has reached out to the chief and has tried to work with him in the past and not had a whole lot of luck. I don't pretend to understand that. I don't know if it's personalities or what, but the sense I get is it's in your face. It's always in your face. And I don't see a lot of progress being made. I only offer that for what little it's worth. If this is a document that's going to be revised periodically, it should be posted somewhere. Uh, thankful that this is the most current. It's, it's, I've got two versions, like I said. Right. Um, and, and kind of like a change in ordinance, what, what new information is there in this version of the document versus uh, uh, previous versions? So. I would certainly take that under advisement, but just as you mentioned earlier, we're, we're all volunteers. So, I mean, there's not a single <laughs> one of us that are publishers. And what could you look at? We're volunteers. Exactly. You know, so. exactly. Mr. DeBruns, may I suggest you get with this gentleman after the meeting and further your discussion and make I'm done. suggestions and sure. switch contact, share done. contact information? Because that might be a more productive way of sharing. And well, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Can I, two things. Um, on, on the policy review um, type of thing, uh, we have in the past tried to be a part of that conversation. Um, Internal Affairs actually redid theirs, and we weren't mentioned at all. Um, the board asked why we weren't, and they said we'd look into that um, kind of thing, right? But we never heard anything back. That's and right. so well, I, I think um, in some ways we're kept at an arm's length um, in, in the policy aspect. And then in reviewing cases, my understanding of the ordinance is we can review cases that we've reviewed. So we can't review all the, the complaint cases. Right, does that make sense? No. No. Rose, is that correct? You can, right. you can audit the files for, to determine compliance with the article okay. involving the police review board. So in the past, members of the board would go over to the police department and, and look through the whole file to make sure that the notices went out as they were supposed to and the letters went out as they were supposed to. Since that time, when the only way to access those files were at the police department, 
Sergeant Tate arranged for you all to have that secure access where you get to see all the complaints as they're coming in and then um, you get your appeal files there as well. Once the time period for filing the appeal has lapsed, the board had decided that that would be when if they had questions about a complaint and what happened on that complaint, they would ask Sergeant Tate and then he could come to the next meeting prepared to answer questions about that. Yeah, but that was kind of like um, an extra just. Right, but in addition to us, that, right? as Sergeant Burton said today, or Chief Burton said today, if you want to go look through files and do the audits, but you're, you're not just, ran, it's not like, I think um, Bill Davis had asked about just viewing body cam, just random body cam. There ha actually has to be a complaint mm -hmm. because that's when the ordinance, that article kicks in is if it's about a complaint. Um, so you can't review, say, a criminal case that has no one's filed a complaint on. So you wouldn't be able to look at those records unless they were open records, but most of those are closed. Not all of them, but most. Right, and I'm um, seeing that listed as just one. You are seeing the complaint information as it's coming in, and then you have an easy avenue to get information about that once the time period's elapsed for the appeal coming to you. If you want to go and audit files again, it would just be scheduling that with internal affairs to do that, but that would be auditing for compliance with that article about the review okay. board. The policy review, the there's an ordinance um, in chapter 21 that requires the police chief to make the policies available to the uh, police department employees in the public and place them on the city website all police department policies guidelines directives orders rules and regulation regulations except those that would reveal tactics that would endanger the life of any police officer and if you google um i can't remember exactly what I googled but if you go to the city website and google police policies it'll pick up I google I think city of Columbia Mo police policies and the policy manual is there online you can click on each policy and read through them to as much as you'd like um, but once again the only policy that should be all the policies except those that would reveal tactics which would endanger the life of a police officer um, with regard to broadcasting, the meetings used to be broadcast until the board decided that they felt that that was dissuading members of the public from coming here on appeals um, because some of the people had said things like they didn't want to have to be on TV. So at that point, the board sent a report to council and asked council to stop broadcasting because they were broadcast originally at council's request. Council then agreed with the board. They said that you could stop broadcasting it is not as easy as flipping a switch. It requires staffing by city channel, and so there's the expense of the staffing, and there's also either interpreters or closed captioning that has, also has an expense. So if you want to be broadcast again, that would just be a motion to send a report to council for that second vote. If that motion passes, then the chair would send a report to the council saying that they that you all have decided that you want to be broadcast again and then it would be up to council to decide whether or not to use the resources to do that or not. And if I could weigh in on that, I, I see no problem with not broadcasting your review process with individuals. I think that's personal and I, I completely agree that doesn't need to be broadcast. But if we're expanding or actually looking at the duties, again, section 21-49, Review and make recommendations of police chief and city manager on police policies, procedures, and training. That is something that you guys could very easily be deliberating on. That is the type of information that we need visible. I mean, Race Matters Friends, again, we volunteer, we do the same thing. People might accuse us of having a bias. One part of being independent, you're an independent body. Take what we provide, disregard it, doesn't really matter. But if you have the debate and you're open about it, we have some kind of basis to further this um, discussion, that's really kind of what we're after. I think that you're in a position that that's kind of, it falls under your duties. That, um, you know, if, if again, if they're bypassing you, I mean, in this last case of that CRU unit, they bypassed city council altogether. So, I mean, to me, that's kind of underhandedness. Um, that's flat out the opposite of transparency, and that's part of the problem. That's part of the politics behind this, and our citizens should not be suffering for politics. Thank you. Thank you much. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? 